This morning's scripture is Psalm 54, which is a prayer for defense against enemies. It's called a mascal of David. Well, my thought was, okay, what's a mascal? So I looked it up a little bit. So for clarity, it's a literal or musical term. Some translations refer to it as a contemplation. The New King James Version refers to it as a well-written song. And the NET Bible as a contemplative poem. It is a message for the choir director that stringed instruments should be used. Just to give a little background so it makes more sense what the scripture is, the subject refers to when Saul wanted to kill David. So David went to Ziph to hide from Saul and was near where David's family lived. David gave help to the people of Ziph to fight their enemies the Philistines. But the men of Ziph betrayed David by telling Saul where David was hiding. So David prayed to God, writing, Save me, O God, by thy name, and vindicate me by thy power. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me, and violent men have sought my life. They have not set God before them. Say it. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the sustainer of my soul. He will recompense the evil to my foes. Destroy them in thy faithfulness. Willingly I will sacrifice to thee. I will give thanks to thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from all trouble. And my eye has looked with satisfaction. On my enemies. We bow in prayer with you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. We thank you that we, your people, are told we can and should turn to you for guidance, strength, and help. That you are there to help us and will never abandon us. Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. Be with those who could not be here today, and we ask your help in restoring our world to health from this horrible pandemic. Comfort those who are sick and those who have lost loved ones. Give us your peace in knowing that you are in control. Be with us this morning as we worship and praise you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
on some church members, I want to draw your attention to uh, a prayer for the new year on page three. Uh, we're not going to read that this morning, but um, I felt like it was a, a good prayer to bring to your attention, that it is something that you might want to uh, take home and maybe uh, study over and pray over, uh, pray uh, possibly this afternoon. Um, some updates that I wanted to, uh, uh, to share with you this morning, we have a number um, of updates. Uh, uh, Pat Gunn, she went home from rehab, um, I think that was on Thursday. Um, she was in uh, Deaconess uh, Rehab, she is home. Um, they are going to come in, I know she said Monday and Tuesday of this week for in-home uh, therapy. Um, and also I asked her about uh, meals, uh, if it would be helpful if anybody brought any uh, meals in. And she sounded open to that. Um, she said, you know, it is just me and Roger. And so if anybody is thinking about meals, you know, don't think in terms of, you know, a lot of people. Uh, but it did sound like she would be open to that. So if that's something that you think you can help with uh, or even coordinate, uh, feel free to, to let me know so that we can uh, possibly help uh, uh, Pat out. Uh, also, uh, Val Vogelman, she had spent several days in the hospital uh, this week, which was a, a follow-up to her uh, neck surgery, but they were thinking there might have been some heart issues but then they determined yesterday um, that it was not. It's uh, 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 neck spasms or something related to her uh, heart surgery that it does not look like it's a heart problem. She's not going to have a, a heart cat like uh, it looked like she was going to uh, need to have. Uh, Linda Strait, um, she has been moved to the terrace at Solaron uh, following her uh, knee surgery that she had following her fall. So that's the update on Linda. Continue to keep uh, Linda in prayer. Uh, we will not be seeing her for a while while she's in rehab uh, out there. And also, uh, Patsy Wicker, an update on her. She is awaiting uh, the doctor's consultation on January the 19th uh, before they set a date on when her next, um, uh, before they put the, the stent in next in her other artery that had an 80% blockage. So continue to remember uh, passing your prayer and also an update on Bob and Gail. Uh, they are in isolation uh, again uh, now due to um, one of their caregivers um, recently uh, being diagnosed with uh, COVID-19. And so we do want to be in prayer for them while they're in isolation. First of all, that they don't get it because uh, I know, as you know, um, it can spread um, easily that way in uh, nursing homes by the caregiver. Um, also an update, you see that Art, Juanita Hart are not here this morning. Juanita called and said that Art had a bad night last night and that they really didn't get any sleep last night. So uh, so we want to prayer, pray for Art that he'll get better from uh, the sickness. And also uh, uh, Marvin and Imogene uh, McConnell. Uh, Emory said that uh, Imogene called yesterday and gave an update that their daughter, uh, Jane Ann Gansman, uh, was fresh out of the hospital yesterday after having been in the hospital for 12 days uh, with COVID-19. So we rejoice with that, and uh, it's uh, good to hear also uh, that Marvin and I Jr. are doing fairly well, but they can certainly use your prayers uh, as well, uh, too. So let's go to the Lord now. Uh, prayer. Heavenly Father, we have several church members that, uh, that uh, we're lifting up to you, Father, in prayer. Um, that, that have needs, whether they're uh, sicknesses or, um, or concerns about uh, uh, COVID, uh, waiting on doctor's appointments, um, people in therapy. Uh, Father, we just lift them all up to you, Father, that you would just tend to each one of them, that you would um, uh, just give them the comfort in knowing that you're going through this with them, that you're right with them, Father. Um, and I uh, pray, Lord, that you just restore them to health and that um, uh, that they would be able to, um, those that do, are able to get out and worship, that they would be able to, to be back and join us back in worship again uh, soon. And Father, um, as we're now unfolding a chapter on a new year now, Father, I pray that you would uh, just guide us as we look to the new year, uh, guide us in, in how we can better serve you, during 2021, 
um, how we can better be a better witness for you. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand as we sing together. There is power in the blood. Where's all the ball?
Amen to the scripture that was read today. Thank you, Bela. Now, we've got to all stand and sing another song. The choir's not here yet to get a, a, you know, a special together, but we want you to be the special music right now. If you would all stand for a thousand times to sing.
Today I'll be reading from John 8, 31-38. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you truly are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offsprings of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone that practices sin is a slave to sin. The sin doesn't, does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are all springs of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I've seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, I pray that you would bless the reading of your word, that you would bless the message that I am about to deliver. Uh, that you would give proper understanding to the hearers, and that anyone who has not yet been set free would be set free today. Amen. So by the time that we get to the end of the passage that Tyler uh, just read, it is clear that the people Jesus is talking about are not Christians. Now someone may be sitting here today, and you may be thinking, well, I've always been told that Christians do not lose their salvation but in this passage, it seems clear that these are Christians who lost their salvation. Well, um, to believe that is to take this out of context, these verses out of context of the Bible as a whole, but especially out of context of the book of John. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life is eternal. It does not end. Now I'm going to look over a little later in John chapter 10, verses 27 to 29. John 10, verses 27 to 29 reads, My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. So since it does not mean that they lost their salvation, what does this mean? A second option is that the group he addressed in verses um, 34 to 38 of chapter 8 are... Uh, who are clearly not Christians, is a subset of those he addressed in verse 31. However, I do not think that those addressed in the whole passage are Christians. Let's look at what is meant by the word believed in verse 31. The Greek word pistuo is translated believe, but to understand exactly what it means in English, we must look at its context. In some places, it is used to mean faith, but in other places it is used to mean mental assent that we might use the word think. Now some of you know I have issues with heights, okay? I love the ground, I love being on the ground. Um, so I appreciate Ted Bennett's parachute example. Um, I intellectually believe that a parachute could get me safely to the ground. However, I would not have the faith to try to demonstrate uh, that belief by jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. Now, I do admire people like Ted and like Bill Jarrett who have demonstrated that faith. Now, looking over at James chapter 2, verse 19, James 2, 19 states, you believe that there is one God, you do well. The demons also believe and tremble. Now, did you get that? The demons believe. 
Be assured, the demons do not have a saving faith in God. Yet, they not only believe in God, they know there is a God. Therefore, I believe those Jews referenced in John 8 did not have saving faith in Jesus, but were merely following Jesus physically, uh, possibly to, to uh, see what he did, uh, possibly to see miracles, uh, to see him performing miracles, maybe for entertainment purposes. Now back to today's text in John chapter 8. Jesus says in verse 31, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Now remember, when it refers to disciples, we are not talking about the twelve apostles, uh, but rather we're talking about Christians or those uh, followers of Christ and those who follow Christ's teachings. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines abide as to remain indefinitely in existence or in the same state. It also has synonyms of continue, endure, persist, and remain. I like the New Living uh, Translation's wording of verse 31, which is, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. The phrase, try Jesus, might look like a catchy bumper sticker, but it's bad theology. You don't become a Christian just by trying Jesus like you would try a new diet. Now looking over at Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, Matthew 7, 21 to 23 states, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Now I need to stop right there briefly from reading the passage to tell you that the church that I grew up in, in Barberville, Kentucky, had a former pastor who came back to our church after uh, he was gone for a number of years and shared with the congregation that, it, that he uh, first um, uh, professed his faith in Jesus and trusted Jesus for the forgiveness of his sins after he left pastoring our church. Continuing on with verse 23, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Leave me, you who practice lawlessness. Someone can put on a good act for a few weeks and maybe even years, but God knows the heart. Picking back up with John chapter 8, 31, and continuing through verse 33, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Now their answer was so untrue. They had been in bondage in Egypt and Babylon, and they were currently under the rule of Rome. So you may wonder, well then why did they say that they had never been enslaved to anyone? Well, if if you've got that question in your mind, don't ask me because I don't know either. Uh, I did not see the answer to that in anything I studied in preparation for this sermon. Um, so I really don't have a clue on that one. But anyway, but what I do know is that they were free neither physically nor spiritually. After my sophomore year of college, I served as a BSU summer missionary uh, as an assistant uh, prison chaplain at a close security prison in Georgia. Now, what that means is that this prison did not have any death row inmates, though they did have a couple of inmates that had had overturned death row convictions. Now, every prisoner there in the prison had to perform some kind of uh, work duties uh, while they were in prison. Um, one of the prison barbers was named Tommy. Tommy was a Christian and did not keep the fact that he was a Christian secret. Now, Warden Doug had always, um, always had Tommy cut his hair because he felt like Tommy was the best barber uh, in the prison. Tommy told me one time that he considered 
um, D- uh, Warden Doug a captive audience whenever he would cut his hair, and so he took every opportunity he could to share the gospel uh, with, uh, with Warden Doug. Don't miss the dynamics here, okay, folks? You have Warden Doug physically the undisputed freest man in the prison. He could come and go whenever he wanted to and was the only person that could. And he could tell other people, whether it be employees of the prison or whether it be inmates, what to do and when to do it. Yet, spiritually, Warden Doug was a slave to sin. And now there's Tommy, an inmate, who was just about the closest thing to a physical slave in our culture. But spiritually, he was a free man because his sins were forgiven. And now, for the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, shortly before Tommy was released from prison, Warden Doug put his faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of his sins, and he became a free man Indeed, God used a prisoner to lead the warden to faith in Christ. Now let's pick back up with verse 34. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. I think the word practice is an important verb in this this verse. To practice is to intentionally do something repeatedly. I practiced this sermon before coming to you today to deliver it. Now, whoever sins is a slave of sin unless there is radical transformation. Paul addresses this in Romans 6. I encourage you to read all of Romans 6 um, uh, at home sometime for more insight into being a slave to sin. Now, if you continue in a life of sin, you are a slave to sin. I cannot make it through one day without sinning, but the child of God will regularly go to the Father with remorse and confess their sin. Now, let's pick back up with verse 35. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. A servant may work for a day, but when the day's tasks are done, he goes home. The son comes in, sits down and relaxes because he's family. He's the son. Jesus was telling them that they are not really God's children. They may be in the temple then, but they would not be there for long. They claimed to be the seed of Abraham, yet they wanted to kill Jesus. We do not not have to be a slave to sin. The Son sets us free. As Christians, we have been freed from the penalty of sin. That is the first of three tenses of freedom or salvation for the Christian. And here are all three tenses. First, and to repeat, we have been saved from the penalty of sin. That's through justification. We are being saved from the power of sin. And that process is sanctification. And one day, we will be saved from the presence of sin, and that's in glorification. Several years ago, the church bought some blue t-shirts with a graphic that looked like a name tag that said, Hello, I'm free, with a smaller print at the bottom that said, If the Son set you free, you will be free indeed, John 8, 36. This graphic was designed by our senior pastor, Brother Steve, who is very creative. The graphic is a great conversation starter. I like to wear the t-shirt to Potter's Will whenever we serve a breakfast, and I pray that God will give me a, um, a, a conversation with someone to where I can share the gospel with. And I am glad that sometimes those conversations happen. 
On a Friday morning about two months ago, I accidentally pulled that t-shirt out of my dresser drawer and put it on thinking it was my nursing home t-shirt that was of the exact same color. The problem is, is that we have a dress code uh, which I try to observe, though not everyone there does. Our dress code specifies that clothing with verbiage are not allowed to be worn to work. Most of our employees wear scrubs in colors, which uh, designates in what de department that they work in, except for on Fridays we can wear our Pine Haven or Riverbend uh, t-shirts. So I unknowingly wore it to work at the nursing home and was stunned when the first person said something to me about being free. Uh, then I noticed what I had done uh, that day. My supervisor was off work that day, and no one challenged me on wearing a shirt that was not according to the dress code. Now let's loop back to verse 31 and 32. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What is the truth? When I left work on that Friday morning, I was certain the truth was that I was wearing a Pine Haven t-shirt to work. Many of you have been, a have been asking yourself what truth was during 2020. We listened to or read one news media report on the truth about presidential candidates, and then another news media seemed to present the opposite facts. That reminds us that all journalists are humans and have personal biases that affect their perception of truth. And what about masks? Now is the time for audience participation. Has anyone here heard a news report during 2020 that wearing a mask was not helpful in the transmission of COVID-19? If so, just raise your hand. Okay, I see several people um, that did. Truth seemed to evolve during 2020. Truth is that which conforms to reality. I'm going to read now John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You may have great faith that you will go to heaven when you die. But if your object of your faith is in anything besides Jesus and His saving work, what He's done for you, your faith is insufficient. What is truth? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 4. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with Scriptures. And then in verses 5 through 8, it tells us that He was seen by more than 500 witnesses. What about you? Do you accept this truth, that, the, that Jesus died for your sins, that He was buried and raised on the third day and seen by many witnesses? And that putting your faith in Jesus is the only way that you can be saved? Let's pray now. It is highly likely that someone listening to me today is still a slave to sin. God, they do not know the spiritual freedom that only you can give. I pray that today might be their day of salvation. Amen. If you are ready to put your uh, faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, I would be glad to talk to you as we sing today.
do to become a Christian. Remember, it's not about what we do, it's about what Jesus did. Jesus paid it all. And um, remember, as the, the t shirt says, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. So I encourage you this week to be mindful of who you might uh, come in contact with that you can share that. Um, knowing that anyone that you come in contact with, if they have not become a Christian yet, they are not spiritually free. And you have the knowledge being able to share to them what it takes for them to be spiritually free. Uh, look forward to seeing you all tonight, if you're able to, to come tonight. And let's now close uh, in benediction. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day that you've given us. Thank you for this time of worship. And Father, I pray that you would just uh, show us opportunities. Father, bring it to mind opportunities that we can take to share the good news of Jesus Christ for other people that we come in contact with. Father, I pray that you would bring other people into our paths for that purpose of sharing the gospel with them. And Father, now I pray that you would uh, bring us back safely this evening and next Sunday and uh, for another time of worship for you of you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.